Good morning. Uh, this very early morning. Uh, my name is Justice Mugambi. I want to welcome you for these devotions that uh, begin today. Uh, I serve at head of Sita Med Office as the Deputy Bishop, and it gives me great pleasure to bring you these devotions, basically looking at this season, the season of Easter. And uh, I want to be, I will be talking about the cross. And the cross takes many, for, for many perspectives, and we will be exploring that together. This morning I want to start us off by looking at a topic I am calling the marks of the way of the cross. Yesterday that was Sunday. It is what we normally call Palm Sunday. And this, is the, this Palm Sunday marks the beginning of a very, very difficult week for our Savior Jesus Christ when we were, he was here on earth. He had to walk this way of the cross. He did not ride a car like today. Or, or, or you know, or, or he rode in a donkey, on a donkey yesterday, as he entered into Jerusalem, the great triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But from there, really, he walks to the cross. He is conscious that he is walking to the cross. And so I want us to read a scripture that will encourage us this morning. And this is from Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to verse 41. This is what Mark records. He says they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here where I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. He said, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, Stay here and keep watch. When a little father, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Verse 36, Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, from me, yet not what I will, but your will be done. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? In, resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. As I have mentioned, Jesus had a very difficult experience on the way to the cross. The last week of Jesus on earth was troubling, was difficult. This is what is called the Passion Week that began this last Sunday. And the week begins, as we've said, or as, as we have said on Sunday, with Jesus entering into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and he did this triumphantly as the king of the Jews, and as it turns out later, he is the king of the world. And on Friday of this week, those many years, he was crucified, and his journey was a difficult one marked by three several things that I want us to share in this devotion. Number one, we see it was a lonely journey. Brothers, it is lonely all the way for Jesus and for us. We read in Mark chapter 14 verse 50, Jesus had a team of 12, but they all deserted him. He was alone. Then everyone deserted him and he fled. Judas betrayed him. Going at once to, to, to Jesus, when you read Mark chapter 14, verse 45, Judah said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Then men seized him, seized Jesus, and arrested him. We also learn that Peter denied him three times. Mark chapter 14, verse 72. On this journey of the cross, each person must accept to be alone. 
The Bible tells us that when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, though he went with his disciples and he carried a few, three of them that were closest to him, he still left them at a distance and he went and knelt down and he prayed, not once, but three times. You know, calling, calling Jesus that he is mine, it is true. Calling and saying that he is yours, it is true. But I can tell you, it is not plural, it is not ours. Each one of us must know how to handle the cross alone. We have many examples of men and women in scripture who tells us, I mean, who show us that you know the way to the cross, to deliverance, to victory over everything. That way is lonely. Look at Abraham, men like Abraham, who heard the voice of God alone, and they left their father's household. They left their country. Look at Isaac in the land of Gerard in Genesis chapter 26. God called him alone. Look at Jacob, a lonely man making a lonely journey to a place of a destiny. His uncle's place where God spoke to him many times, several times, including when he also a dream and he was lying on a stone on that road. Brothers and sisters, Joseph dreamt alone. Moses saw the burning bush alone. This lonely aspect is the burden of leadership. Leaders see ahead and must be prepared to walk that journey all the way, the journey that they see. They say it is cold at the top. It is true. The weight of the cross demands separation. Jesus separates himself from his disciples. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 36, from his disciples, and he goes to cry to God alone because he knew he would carry this cross alone. That's how, why he separated himself. The Bible says, Then the angel of the Lord attended to him. And this is, this is, this is a true mark of, of a great leader. The angels attended to him. In those moments of alone, in those moments of hearing God alone and determining to walk this journey alone, God will always send help. The angels of God that attended to Jesus will also attend to you. Brothers and sisters, it's where I say that God has not called committees throughout history. He calls individuals. And I pray that our eyes will be open this morning to see that when God gives you a burden for a ministry, that this burden, the burden he gives you, you will carry it to the very end with the help of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you receive a burden. I pray that you receive some unique calling like that of Moses so that you can be able to hold on to it to the end. God help me, help me to hear your voice. And may the Lord help you too to hear your voice. The second mark of, 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 of this way to the cross that we see in Jesus is that this way of the cross is full of suffering and pain. Jesus made a choice to accept the suffering. You know, the cup of the way of the cross was painful and very difficult. The Bible says he went through terrible agony at the Garden of Gethsemane. He, he, is, he even prayed to God, God, this cup is too heavy for me. May it pass me. May it, may it be removed. May I not take of it, but uh, drink of it. But Jesus, by the help of the Holy Spirit, though he was God, felt the pain, felt, felt the difficult. But he reached the point which all of us need to reach. Is how he says, however, not my will, but your will be done. And I want to say, brothers and sisters, to every one of us who love Jesus, must reach a point of a personal surrender to God's will. We must all reach a point where we surrender to his will and not our will. Jesus says, let this cup pass, not by will, but your will be done. I am praying this morning that all of us will reach a point where we must surrender, at, you know, to, uh, surrender all to Jesus and say, not my will, 
but your will be done. Paul calls himself the prisoner of, a prisoner of Christ. You know, he reached also a point of surrender because prisoners do not make choices. We are all prisoners. We are all, you know, we are all slaves, you know, of, of Jesus. We have no other choice as believers. And, and this is the moment, you know, this moment of, of, of saying your will be done is the moment to fully trust God, even when we cannot see him and hear him or even feel him, because he is always working. Jesus says in John chapter 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have a lot of trouble. But he says, take heart, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. And Paul knew this secret. In chapter 20 of Acts of Apostles, verse 22, you know, up to 24, he had finished with himself. Each of us must finish with ourselves. He says, and now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit wants me, that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and to complete, complete the task that Jesus, the Lord Jesus has given me the task of testifying the good news of God's grace. Hallelujah. The, second, the third mark of the cross, the, of the way of the cross, is that it was full of suffering. Jesus, I mean, not suffering, we have looked at suffering, it is full of sacrifices. Jesus sacrificed his very life because of his love for us. He gave up everything. There was nothing left for him. To hold on to. Jesus sacrificed dignity. Many people will hold into their dignity. Comfort. And you know, we leave this ministry, this, we leave this Christian walk, this way of the cross, not for our own comfort, but for the comfort of him who called us. Jesus left or sacrificed even his own clothes because they divided his clothes among themselves. We are saying that the way of the cross is the place of suffering. Everything what they were, it requires some sacrifice. Paul says he counts everything a loss or rubbish that he may know Christ. All of us must reach there. Every believer in Jesus must identify what he counted as loss. And in conclusion of our devotion this morning, the people who are assets in the company, even a, a place like Sitam, a place like Hope, uh, where you work, people who will be assets in any institution must learn to sacrifice their time, sacrifice their energy, their thoughts, their skills for that particular institution to be productive. For a good family, for a good marriage, for a good business, for a good career, everything requires sacrifice. Anything worthwhile requires a great amount of sacrifice. How much sacrifice have you made for your life, for your children, for your spouse, for your friends, for your church, for your company? Let us all determine that we will be men and women who do not love ourselves, uh, but rather we are men and women who love what God has given us to do. So there are three marks of the cross, the way of the cross that we have looked at today. It is a way that is full of sacrifices. It is a way that is full of suffering and pain. It is a way that is truly lonely. May the Lord bless each one of you. I pray that if there is anybody who is listening me to, to me today and, and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I believe this is your moment that you can give your life to Jesus. Please just make this prayer after me and allow Jesus to come into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept that I'm a sinner and I accept also that only your blood can cleanse my sins away. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I ask that you may come into my heart, cleanse me from all my sins and remove my name from the book of judgment and write my name in the book of life. From today, I am your child. Thank you for coming into my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
please, if you have made that prayer, we believe God has come into your heart. May you now go and, is, uh, and, and see as a believer or a church believing, a, a Bible believing church, and, and uh, I'd introduce yourself to the pastor, and he will lead you uh, in, in this way. Thank you. God bless you.